the branches, he who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except that he comes through me.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you enjoying yourself today? Are you enjoying the worship? Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. So welcome. Welcome to this beautiful Sunday morning here at Live the World Christian Fellowship. I want to welcome you back. Amen. For those of you who have been here before. And if this is your first time visiting here with us, I want to welcome you here at Live the World Christian Fellowship. This is a good place to be on this Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. So to all our visitors, whether it's, if it's your first time, second time, we want to welcome you. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is a connect card in the seat back pocket in front of you. We would ask for you to please fill that out. Because we want to know who you are so that we can get you connected, so that we can give you some more information about what we do here at Light of the World Christian Fellowship. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to remind you, if you don't, before you leave out of service today, right, I want you to find somebody that you don't know, that you're not familiar with, and just kind of spend some time, a few minutes, getting to know that person, all right? Because we are we're here to fellowship, and we are fellas in the same what? The same ship. Amen. So God bless you. Welcome. I pray that you continue to enjoy the service as we continue to worship. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Trust in the Lord. do better than that. Give God a shout of praise in the room this morning. Hallelujah. You know, I've been thinking a lot about praise and worship and the heart of praise and the disposition of praise. And I was thinking about this, uh, in the Bible, it talks about David and how he was a great king, but he was also a great warrior. And um, we know the story of David and Goliath, but we also know that as you continue to read, he was sent out to fight battles and he won them. And that one day he went out and uh, fought a battle and he came back. And the Bible says that he began to praise the Lord. And as he began to praise the Lord, he said he began to dance before the Lord and his clothes began to get all messed up and begin to come off. And people were like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Like you're out here and you're exposing yourself. And he said, you know what? I will become even more undignified than this. And what he was trying to say is this. He said, you know what? I know who really fought that battle for me. 
I know God used me, I know God sent me out, but I know the one who went before us and won that battle. It wasn't me, but it was God. And so I'm coming back after the victory, after God moved for me, and I know where I need my praise needs to go to. I know what I need to do. It's not for me to take the credit of what's happening. It's not for me to take the accolades, but it's for me to give glory and honor to the person who it's due to. And so this morning, I don't know about you, but I have seen God fight battles for me. And so when I come to church, I have in my mind and in my heart that I will become even more undignified than this. I don't care about anybody else in the room, but I know I owe God a hallelujah. I know I owe him a praise because my God has been great. He has made ways out of no ways. I've seen God make miracles in my life. So I don't know about you, but when you begin to think back on what God has done for you in your life, I know that many people in this place owe God a hallelujah. Somebody else got a praise. And sometimes you have to forget about who is before you and who's behind you. And you have to say, you know what? I know if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here today. I know if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be in my right mind. I know if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be in the financial position that I'm in. I know if it wasn't for God, my marriage would have been broken up a long time ago. So somebody in this room needs to open up their mouth and begin to give God praise and glory in this place. David said, I situation. He said, I will bless the Lord. Sometimes you have to command your soul to bless him. Somebody came in this room this morning and said, you know, I don't feel like worshiping God. My situation doesn't look that good. My prognosis doesn't look that good. But David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. That means his praises will always be on my lips. The best time to give God praise is when you're waiting for him to move for you. When you're believing in the middle of it. That is faith. When you say, I can worship God even in the middle of the storm. I can worship God even in the middle of the valley. I can worship God even though I'm facing the worst time of my life. But I'm still going to give God praise. Because even if he doesn't do one more thing in my life before I get out of here, he is still worthy of the praise. He is still worthy of the glory. He is still worthy. your name in the room today come on sometimes you have to get beyond yourself sometimes you gotta lay down all the stuff you've been dealing with before you got here you gotta begin to fix your eyes on the one who matters sometimes we fix our eyes on the things that don't matter we fix our eyes on the problem we fix our eyes on the situation we can fix our eyes on what the enemy is doing but we have to look to the hills from where our help comes from because our help comes from the Lord God, we will bless your name in this house today. Hallelujah. Come on, let's continue to worship God in the room. Hallelujah.
uh, it's his breath in our lungs. You breathe because of him. You walk because of him. You woke up this morning because of him. Hallelujah. So you should sing out his praise. I need my worshipers in the house to sing with me. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing great. church see y'all all of my worship come on sing it to the lord here's my here's my worship all of my worship father receive Nobody's gonna worship you 
you're moving in this room, God. I have determined in my heart, God, that I will not be silent. God, as long as there is breath in my body, God, I will use it, God, to honor you. I will use it to praise you. Does anybody else have that declaration in their heart? Say, I will not be silent.
forever and always. Always. Forever and always. Always. I will always. Forever and always. God will worship you forever. Forever and always, God, you're worthy forever. Forever and always, God, we will honor you forever, forever, forever and always. Forever and always, forever and always, I'll worship you. Forever and always. church. God, we've made a decision that to come what may, God, you're always worthy of the glory. You're always worthy of the honor, God. God, we choose to worship you, God, with every day, with every breath. God, let there never be a day that we don't rise and bring you praise with our lives, God. We thank you for your presence in the house. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise in the room today. You can be seated and turn your eyes to some video, our screen for video announcements. Welcome to the Light of the World Church family. We are so glad that you joined us on today. We are here to do some announcements. Hope you enjoy them. to celebrate the single greatest event in history, the resurrection of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We hope you're as excited as we are, and we have two opportunities for you to celebrate with us. 
Good Friday, March 29th, we are here having our theatrical production, Essence of Love. The production begins at 7 p.m. This event is completely free and open to the public. Hold on, let's take a second and talk about that. During the Essence of Love, a wacky mishap prompts the family of an elderly widower, James Barrett, to return home suddenly for Easter. The visit not only gives them the shock of their lives, but a lesson on love they'll never forget. This fooling production takes the audience on an unforgettable journey with high comedy, intense drama, and a little something else in between. Laugh out loud, cry real tears, experience the deep essence of God's love as you tag along with the Barrett family. The production begins at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. See you there. Experience the hope, peace, and love of Jesus on Easter Sunday at 10 a.m. Easter services are upbeat, filled with music, fun, exciting children activities, a celebratory word about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and a great opportunity to invite your family, friends, neighbors, everybody you know. Be praying this week about who God might be leading you to invite, and let's pack this place on Easter Sunday. Men of the Low, are you hungry for food and fellowship? Are you hungry for food and fellowship? Well, listen, bring your sons and invite your friends to enjoy fellowship at our men's breakfast on Saturday, April 6th at 10 a.m. This is a great time to meet and connect with the men of our church. We will see you all there. Are you connected to the Light of the World Christian Fellowship? If not, scan the QR code that you see on the screen. It will take you to a place to complete some information so that we can get in touch with you and let you know all things going on here in this house. If you need prayer, why don't you scan the QR code that you see on your screen? It's gonna give you a link where you can download the app and then you can go to the prayer wall and fill out your request. Our intercessors will be praying for you. Light of the World has some praying folks. Let us pray with and for you. To keep up with all things Light of the World, follow us on Instagram at the Low Humble. Hit subscribe on your YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. And now let us worship with our giving. This is the time we come to worship with our giving. I've had conversations with people and they've shared with me that they're struggling in the realm of tithing and giving. They seem to uh, not be able to trust God and what he said in terms of God moving for them and providing for them when they're having some financial difficulties. Well, I'm here to tell you that for over the last 35 to 40 years, we've seen God do some miraculous things in the realm of our finances as we trust Him. We have a particular model and a value here at the Light of the World Christian Fellowship where we said we're not going to beg or pressure people for offerings. In fact, the Lord says, give with a cheerful heart and be a cheerful giver and don't give under compulsion or under pressure. We believe that as well. But we know that when we're faithful to God, when we can trust God with our gifts, that God is able to do more than we can ask or think or imagine. So today, join us on our journey of generosity. You may not have ever done that before, but will you take a moment and trust God this year to do something great in the realm of your finances as well. You can give to the light of the world in several ways. You can go online and give on our giving platform. You can text to give. You can also give in the service just by filling out an envelope and placing it in the tithe box. However you give, remember this, that God will give back to you so that you can continue to be a good and generous gift. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. As you guys have known, the last couple of weeks we've been sharing testimonies of what God is doing here at Live the World. Did anybody have a testimony this week? God moved for anybody here in the room this week? Anybody? All right, praise the Lord. I see those hands. We would love to hear those testimonies. But we're going to have uh, Brother Harvey Hood. He's going to come and share what God did for him and share his testimony. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
um, my testimony is before COVID came out and I had told someone that I had wanted to get my own truck. And they told me that I was too old to get my truck. So years came by and I just started thinking, how old was Noah when he built the ark? How old was Moses when he set his people free? And how old was Sarah when she had her first child? And I thought about it. I served the same God that they served. And with God, all things are possible. So January this year, I got what my heart desired. And I was specific about the kind of truck I want, the color and everything. And God had met my needs. I don't know if they had a picture of the truck that, that I had got, that I have now, but I do. I had one of my company logo on my truck, which I do have it now. Everything that I want, God had met my needs, and I am truly blessed. Thank you. Praise the Lord. How many know that our God is able? He's able to do exceedingly abundantly all we could ask, think, or imagine. Amen. When did I start to forget all of the great things you did? When did I throw away faith for the impossible? How did I start to believe that you weren't sufficient for me? Why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? You are more than able. You are more. more than able. Can anybody testify that our God is more than able? You are more than able. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Because it's easy for He's gonna move. Anything is 
situation this morning.
believe it this morning? Do you believe that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord is able? The God that we serve, he's able. He's able to do more than what you can begin to imagine or think. You know the song said, who am I to deny what the Lord can In other words, who are you to deny what the Lord can do? When we were in worship, I heard the Lord say, tell my people that I'm still moving. I'm still healing. I'm still performing miracles. I am still Jehovah God. I it will supply. I'm still reconciling situations in your life. God said, I'm still moving. It may not seem like it. It may not feel like it. But God is still moving. You got to believe it. See, it is a faith walk. You got to believe what God said. You got to believe God's word even when it doesn't feel like it. Even when you can't sense his presence. You got to walk in faith and believe that God is moving. He's at work all around me. He's fixing my situation. I, I, I can't see it right now, but God is moving on my circumstances. I don't feel him moving, but I, I, I'm assured through the word of God that God is faithful, that God is moving on my behalf concerning my circumstance. We got to believe it with all of our heart that God is moving. Who are you to deny what the Lord can do? Some of us have already said, now, well, God, he, he's not going to fix this. Don't look like he's going to work this circumstance out. 
look like God didn't show up in the time frame that I thought that he should have showed up in. He didn't show up, so it looks like that God has just took his hands off of it. But he's working all the time. He's moving. The Bible says that he never sleep, nor does he slumber. Nothing that happened in your life that caught God off guard. So know this morning that God is moving on your behalf. Come on, I let us stand to our feet one more time. I want everything that has breath, every able-bodied believer, everything that is in the room, come on, stand to your feet, and we gonna give God the best praise. We're going to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're going to offer up our sacrifice of praise. Even if you don't feel like praising him, it's time to praise God. It's time to lift your voice to the King and to tell him that you are thankful, that you are grateful for all that he's already done in your life. So this is not a spectator sport. We have to participate. I can't worship for you, but I've decided that I'm not gonna let the rocks cry out for me. That I'm gonna give God praise. I'm gonna give God some glory and honor for all that he has done. Come on, lift him high. He deserves all the praise. Come on, call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Exalt his name in the earth. Give him praise for he is king. For he is our God. He's our God. He's our God. He is our Lord. Thank God we praise you. We bless you in your house, God. Come on, let's bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. You are worthy of our praise. Woo! He delights in your worship. You are worthy of our praise, God. Oh, yes, you are our Lord. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. You are worthy to be lifted up, God. Woo! Father, for you're worthy. Thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you, God, for opening up doors. Um, thank you for touching our bodies, Lord. Um, thank you for keeping us, God. Uh, thank you for keeping our mind, Lord. Uh, thank you for providing for us. Uh, thank you for strengthening us, God. Uh, thank you for giving us hope and joy and peace. Lord, we thank you. Oh, we thank you, God. We come to worship you and to offer you our praise. All right, can you give him a big hand clap one more time as you're seated? Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah, we serve an awesome God. You said, well, Pastor Jackie, why is it that every Sunday you come up and you encourage us to worship? See, I know what worship does for us. It positioned us for a blessing. See, if we would just worship and give him glory, it positions us. I believe that some people are, are asking God for some things, and they've been believing God for some things, and the Bible tells us to ask and the Father says he knows what we have need of even before we ask. 
But, but I believe when we ask God, and then when we begin to worship, that he kind of just put us in the head of the line. But somebody else is back there still asking. When somebody has asked and already said, oh God, I believe that you are able. I believe that you're going to do it, God. And begin just to worship the Lord. I believe that God just shows up. Because he sees our faith. He sees our faith to believe and to trust that he is our God. That he is our daddy. And our daddy knows exactly what we need. And he wants to give us good gifts. He wants to supply all of our needs. He don't want us to go liking in any area of our life. God is able and he wants to pour out all of the provisions and all that he has for us. Woo! See, you're going to get it after a while. Somebody, you're going to get it. You're going to get it after a while. You're going to understand that worship, worship is something that propels us into the presence of God. Woo! You get your prayers answered in worship. When you begin to worship the Lord. And worship doesn't happen just when we come into the room. Worship is a lifestyle. He said, I'm looking for those that will worship me in spirit and in truth. Worship be in spirit and truth. That means when we align ourselves with the will of God and we begin to worship him because of who he is, not because of what he can do for us, because he's worthy alone. If he never does anything else in your life, he is still, he's still worthy. I'm trying to get to this word, but if he never does nothing else in your life, he is still worthy. The Bible says that every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord. See, if you don't think that he's worthy right now, there's coming a day that every knee the atheist is going to bow. The people that believed in Buddha, they going to bow. The people that believe in all these different types of religion, they going to bow because they going to know who is God. That he's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. Oh, you might have been worshiping Buddha. You might have been worshiping yourself, your job, your career. You might have been worshiping all these other things. But God says that I am the supreme God. There is no other God that is like the God that we serve. He is the creator of the universe. And just with one word. He calls everything to come into existence. So all of that little stuff that you worried about, all of that stuff that you racking your brain about, you're worried and you're frustrated, you crying over and you're in anxiety about it. All of that stuff that causes you not to sleep at night, all of that stuff that you carry on your body, that you carry in your mind, that is weighty, that is heavy on you, God says that I am the God that is able He's able. He's able to meet us at the point of the need that's in our lives. He's a restorer of our joy. He can give you a peace of mind in the midst of a, a battlefield. God can give you a peace of mind. Because he's God. The Bible says he's the Prince of Peace. He's the Everlasting Father. He's 
God. So he can. And not only can he can, he will. <laughs> I need you to get it. He will. He will step in. He'll step right in your situation. Step right in your mess. He masters in mess. He's a master of it. And he knows how to take care of it, church. So rise up in courage. Rise up in faith. And believe that God is with you every step of the way. Amen. Could you give my God, my Savior, my King a big hand clap in the room? Amen. 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 Well, we have endeavored to allow God to have his way in this room. When we come to worship on Sunday, we come for an audience of one, and that is to experience God. Amen. And so we endeavor to allow him to just have his way and, and not just rush through our services, but make room for God to move. You know, God might just want to move in the worship. You know, he might want to just move in the welcome. Whatever he wants to do, we just say, God, have your way and let your will be done. Amen. And we honor him in this house. So if you're visiting with us for the very first time, welcome to the Light of the World Christian Fellowship Church. We're so glad that you're here worshiping with us this morning. And we pray that your time with us this morning will be a blessing, that God will encourage your heart and enrich your heart. Is there any members in the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in the room. They're in the room. And I am so proud of them. Yesterday, we went out and blanket our community by blessing them. And I am encouraged by the testimonies that have come forth. We just said we wanted to go out and be a blessing. And so, therefore, God used us to be a blessing in our community. So I want to thank everyone that went out this past weekend. Thank you, Sister Andrea, for organizing the event. And I believe that God was honored. And people got to see Jesus through us yesterday. Amen. Well, I'm ready to go into the Word of God. Are you ready this morning? We're still in the book of Acts, and we're traveling together in the book of Acts, learning about the Acts of the Apostles and what God has been doing in this new church after the dissension of Jesus Christ, after he left, he had empowered his people and gave them the great commission to go out into all the world and to preach the gospel, to make disciples. So we are traveling along with the disciples and we're going to be reading this morning from Acts chapter 13. But let's pray before we go into the word of God. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We give you praise for what you're about to do and what you've already done in this house. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your spirit's power in the room. And God, I thank you for preparing a word for the body of Christ to encourage us, to strengthen us, to help us to understand our purpose and our call for which you have called us for such a time as this. Father, I thank you as the word of God goes forth that it will fall upon good ground, that it will produce a harvest, that it will transform us. It'll transform our thinking. And therefore, our ways will be transformed. Not only will it transform us, it will heal us, encourage us, strengthen us, and empower us. Now, Father, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Acts chapter 13. We'll be starting at the 42nd verse. Acts chapter 13 the 42nd verse, and it reads, as Paul and Barnabas was leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about the things on the next Sabbath. And when the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts of Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas 
who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. And on the next Sabbath day, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the law the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowd, they were filled with jealousy. And they began to contradict what Paul was saying and heap abuse on him. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly. We had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you rejected it, and did not consider yourself worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. He says, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord, and all those who were appointed for eternal life believe. Over the next few minutes, I want to speak to you from the topic of embracing God's call to shine. Embracing God's call to shine. As we dive into what it means to embrace the call to shine in a world that seems so shrewdly darkened. So much darkness all around us. But God has given his people, his children, our mission. And that is to be a beacon of light to illuminate the path of salvation to all nations. Now, when we look at Acts chapter 13, there is a sense of tension in the text as we witness Paul growing frustration with the Jewish leaders. This appeared to have been the final straw for Apostle Paul. After initially delivering the gospel message to the Jews, as they were God's chosen people, the one whom through the Messiah had come into the world, Paul comes to this profound realization that the gospel message is not only for the Jews, but it is also for the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people. The Gentiles are, is one who belonging to any nation or people group other than the Jewish people. In other words, Apostle Paul began to realize, listen, I have been ministering to the Jews, but the message of the gospel is available to the Gentiles. That ought to make us leap in our spirit. That God did not deny us, but he also grafted us into the promise. The promise that we are now able to be saved because of the message of Jesus Christ. Now, Apostle Paul said this. He says, for this is what God has commanded us to do. He has made us a light to the Gentiles that we may bring salvation to the end of the earth. One translation say this is what God has told us to do. He has made you a light for the nations and you will show people all over the world the way to salvation. In other words, God has made you a light to the nations, a beacon of light to the world. When we look at our world right now, we look up on a world that is perplexed. We look up on a world that's in turmoil, a world that is in full darkness. And we need the light of the Lord Jesus Christ to shine as a beacon of light to the world. 
Paul and Barnabas in Acts chapter 13, they were teaching the message of the gospel. But they were teaching the message of the gospel primarily to the Jewish people. They were in the synagogue. And you know the word of God is catchy. I believe that the word of God spills over. So the Jewish people was in the synagogue and they were listening to Paul's teaching. But I believe that word began to spread outside of that particular congregation. And the Bible says that those who heard Paul teaching urged him and Barnabas. They said, come back and speak to us again on the following Sabbath. So that tells me that they were attractive to the message of the cross. They was attracted to the message of Jesus. And they desired and wanted more. So they told Paul and Barnabas, we say, listen, we want you to come back. Can you come back the next week? See, they were explaining to them that the Jesus of Nazareth was the ultimate Savior. That God's promises would come through the line of David. In other words, they were letting them know, this is your heritage. This is the promise that God has already decreed for you. You need to understand that Jesus of Nazareth has come into the earth and he is the ultimate savior. You're still looking for a savior somewhere else, but we want to tell you about this Jesus. Perhaps Perhaps you missed it when he was on the scene, but we're here now to tell you who he is. They were talking about Jesus, the Messiah, the only God. The Jews were still waiting. They didn't even believe that Jesus had come. But those that was in the synagogue and those that were on the outer parts of the synagogue that heard the message of Jesus, they began to beg him, come back and tell us more. So you didn't have to tell Paul twice because Paul was on mission. In other words, Paul was on assignment. He says, listen, you've opened the door for me. There are some times that people will open the door for you to come in and to begin able to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul says, now that the door is open, we're going to step in. And the following week, Paul and Barnabas went back to the synagogue to teach. And then the text tells us that almost the whole town showed up to hear the word of God. What a powerful word that resonated with the people throughout the town. I'm quite sure that there were some people that was not there. But the message begins to reverberate throughout the town and the city. And they said, we got to go and listen. We got to go and hear this man and hear this gospel that he is preaching. So it tells us in the text that the whole entire town just about showed up. It also reminds me of God's word, that God's word is powerful. And we are the carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to understand that because we carry God's word in us, and his word has power, it has the power to transform lives. It has the power to bring people out of darkness into the marvelous light. It has the power to attract. Well, people say, I need to know where you're going. Let me follow you. I want to go where you go. I want to know the same God that you know. So the people showed up. And they were hungry. They were thirsty. They were ready to receive the word. 
Just like today, we have a dying world that's out there that's in darkness, that is hungry and is ready for the word of God. You may think that they're not ready. You may in your finite mind think, well, I don't know if I can share my faith because it looks like that nobody wants to listen. But there are people that God has already positioned. There is divine appointments that God has already set up. He's already the Holy Spirit has already been ministering to other people's heart ready to receive the word of God. They're just waiting for somebody to come by with the message of life. But in the text it tells us that the Jewish leaders they got jealous. Just that they have gotten jealous about Jesus when Jesus was ministering on the scene. Isn't it strange when somebody is doing a work of the Lord, you have people that are jealous of their assignment. As if God hadn't given you an assignment. If you walk in your calling, you walk on, in your assignment, if you stay on mission, you will see the fruit of your assignment. We don't have to be jealous. We are all in this thing together. And we're all playing a role and a part in the kingdom of God. Everybody can't be the head. Everybody can't be the arms. Everybody can't be the feet. Find your position and line up with it. And then ask the Lord to use you and to anoint you with, on your assignment. They were jealous. The Bible says this in verse 45, when the Jews saw the crowd, they were filled with jealousy. And they began to contradict what Paul was saying and to heap abuse upon Paul. They was jealous when they observed Paul drawing a larger crowd than they've ever seen. Now the religious leaders, they are losing their power. It's kind of like, you know, you have a church and, and then all of the people in your church get up and go to the next church and, and you wonder like, well, what happened? And you go over there to see what's going on and you get jealous because the people have made a move. It still happens today. So they were jealous because Paul and Barnabas was drawing a loud, a large crowd. They was jealous so much that they began to contradict the message. They began to hurl insults at them. But Paul stood strong. Barnabas stood strong. And they persevered in spite of what they did and what they said to them. They endured. They did not give up. Just like Jesus Christ himself, the Bible tells us, he endured what the cross, despising the shame and he is sitting now on the right hand of the throne of God see when God calls you when God chooses you when he anoints you some people might just get a little ticked off they might be a little upset because you are anointed you're a carrier of God's anointing and when the power of God shows up and God use you, there are people will just try to diminish you, try to call you out your name. Oh, I remember when they used to do this. But tell them I'm not the same person I was before BC, before Christ. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. My past is behind me and I'm going forth and I'm on assignment for God. God has been so good to me that God brought me out of darkness into the marvelous life. And I can't wait but tell somebody about Jesus. I don't know about you, but do you know some of these people that seems uh, everywhere they go, they attract a crowd. 
They attract the crowd. A crowd goes. They open up their mouth. They attract the crowd. Why? Because they are anointed by God. And they are on assignment by God. And they say, listen, I don't care what hell throws at me. I'm going to keep on standing. I don't care if you reject me. I'm going to keep on declaring that God is good. I don't care what you say because I know what he has done for me. I know that he's delivered me and he set me free. He brought me out of what I used to be in. I'm not the same old nasty person that I used to be. That I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. So when God gives you an assignment, you have to persevere through it. If somebody turned their back on you or they reject you, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the message. Oh, they're rejecting the message of Jesus Christ. So you have to understand that God is with you, that God will open up doors. See, you got to be like the disciples when you go into a town and you tell them about Jesus. They don't receive it. Just shake the dust off of your feet and keep on going to the next town. So Paul and Barnabas, they found themselves in a situation while they were ministering the word of God. But I like what they said to them. Paul and Barnabas says they, the Bible says they answered them boldly. It says we had to speak the word of God to you first. In other words, they were saying you was our first assignment. You, was the, you were the ones that God told us to go to. We had to deliver the gospel message to the Jews. Why? Because God had already made a covenant with them. God had given them the word. He had brought the Messiah into the world through Israel. They were God's chosen people. And guess what? Today they are still God's chosen people. They may have rejected the message of God, but they are still God's chosen. But when they rejected the message, of God. It opened a door for the Gentiles to come in. And I'm grateful. But the Jews, they, and particularly the Jewish leaders, the religious people, the pastors, and the elders, and the deacons, and the teachers, the worship team, they rejected the message of Christ. Because the Messiah didn't come in the package for which they thought it should have been. Jesus didn't look like the Messiah. He didn't act like they expected him to act. He did things on the Sabbath when they said, no, 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 you can't do that on the Sabbath. You can't heal on the Sabbath. What are you doing? You're not the Christ. But they hurled accusations at them. Over and over. So that makes me wonder. For the body of Christ today. Why are we making accusations against other believers? That are on target. That are on mission for Christ. Living for God. Sanctify, holy, living right, died life lining up with God's will and God's purpose. But we're jealous. Then it tells us in verse 46b, it says, but after they rejected the message, he says, well, since you rejected it, and you did not consider yourself worthy of eternal life. Now we turn to the Gentiles. See, they didn't consider themselves worthy of eternal life. They didn't do it by rejecting the offer of God. See, God's word, I need you to get this, uh, it's going to be accepted by some, but it's going to be rejected by others. And when you are on target and on mission and ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ, when they reject you, don't take it personal. 
they rejected God's word. In Isaiah 50. Three verses three said this about Jesus. They rejected him when he was Jesus in the flesh, walking among them, teaching them and talking with them. They still rejected Jesus. The word of God said he was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering, familiar with pain, like one from whom the people hid their faces. He was despised and he was held in low esteem. So if they did it to Jesus, how much more are the people are going to despise or reject you? But the problem is you don't need to be worried about that. Just stay on target. Stay on assignment and allow the Lord to use you. And because of the Jews rejecting the message of Christ, Paul was determined because of what the word of God says that God has commanded them to take the gospel straight to the Gentiles. Paul said, listen, y'all don't want to hear. Y'all don't want none of this. You don't want what I have for you. You don't want the word of God. I'm going and I'm going to talk to the Gentiles now. In other words, his mission enlarged. God enlarged his territory. He says, listen, you was on assignment and you were speaking to the Jews. Now I'm going to add something else to your plate. I'm going to enlarge your territory. Now you can go out and minister to the Gentiles as well. See, this was not a deviation from God's plan, but rather it was a fulfillment of it. God has always been in his plan for to bring salvation to all people. That is the good news of Jesus Christ. So Paul says, listen, because this is God's plan to bring salvation to men and women, to boys and girls. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done in your life. But it's been in his plan to bring salvation to all people. He told Paul, he says, I've made you a light for the Gentiles. He said, listen, Paul, don't get distracted with the mission, but stay on mission. I made you a light. In Isaiah 49, verses 6, there is Jacob and Israel. We see the same promise in that passage of Scripture. And it says that I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. When we look at that verse, that is the great commission of the Old Testament. Old Testament. And it is the same that is quoted by Paul and Barnabas in Acts chapter 13 verses 47. This is what God has commanded us. We didn't get a choice. He says God has commanded us to go. He says I've made you a light to the Gentiles that you will bring salvation to the ends of the earth. So Paul was saying, Barnabas was saying, they said God God commanded us to do this. And we're going to say on target. We're going to stay on mission. We're going to take this message of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Listen, the message can't just stop with you. You got to decide, listen, when I'm out, when my time is over, I don't want the message to stop with me. I want it to go from the next generation to the next generation. That's why, church, we got to be bold. We got to be courageous. We got to tell our sons and our daughters. We got to tell us other people about Jesus. You don't want the gospel to start with you, to stop with you when you close your eyes. He told us to take the salvation message to the ends of the earth. See, Christ is the light of the world. John 8, 12 says this, Jesus said of himself, I am the light of the world and whosoever follow follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus says, listen, I need you to understand who I am. I'm on the scene. If you follow me, you're not going to walk in darkness, but you're going to walk in light. In other words, your life is going to thrive under Jesus Christ. 
Christ's rule in your life. Doesn't mean that you're not going to have no problems. Doesn't mean that you're not going to have no trials in your life. But with Christ in you, because he is in you, you have the hope of glory in Christ Jesus. You can move to the next. You can move out of every storm, every valley in life. Why? Because I have him in me. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And Christians are to reflect his light. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. But instead they put it on a stand to give light to everyone in the house. In the same way, church, I need you to get there. Let your light shine before others so they may see your good deeds and glorify the Father God in heaven. So what is he saying? Let your light shine. See, when we look at the text, uh, it's giving us the divine commission that is given to every believer. It's not just to the pastors, not just to the elders, but it's given to all of us. Uh, we are on assignment to take the gospel throughout the world. Just as Paul has been called to be the light to the Gentiles, we are called to shine the light of Christ in the darkness of the world around us. We are called, appointed, not all we call and appointed, but we are anointed. You got to know that you got the anointing of God on the inside of you. God has anointed you for such a time as this. You got to tell yourself, I am anointed by God. I am called by God. I am chosen by God. I have an assignment. Your assignment ain't to build houses. Your assignment ain't to get wealth. But your assignment is to increase the kingdom of God. You are anointed for that. You may not be anointed for everything else, but let me tell you, you are anointed for this assignment. You're anointed for it. You're anointed for God has chosen you. God has called you for such a time as this. You are anointed to do it. See, God, eternal plans is to extend salvation to all of the nations. He desires salvation for every nation, every tribe, every tongue. So we can't turn our noses up and say, no, you can't have this God that I have. Because you don't look like me. No, that's not what the word of God said. You don't sound like me. No, the word tells us uh, that God has got this, this word, provided this word for us to take to the nations. And when you look on the nations, I don't even know how many tribes there is all over the world. But there are a whole lot of them. But he wants the message of the, of the gospel to go through every tribe, every tongue, every dialect. There are so many dialects dialects in the earth. God intended for the message to go forward. See, the power of the gospel is not only transformative, but it's also inclusive. See, God's inclusive love and his desire for every person to experience salvation grace. In other words, what is he saying? You are loved by God. You are loved by God. God loves you. I don't care how dirty you are. I don't care what sins if you have committed. God still loves you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's some love. When you give your one and only son, the only son that you have on the universe, you give him as a ransom for a people that have rejected you, turned their back on you. you. You still say, you know what? I still want relationship with them. So I'm going to give my son so that my son would make it possible for them to come back to me. That's love. God loves you. He loves you. He's not pointing a finger at you. 
He loves you and he wants you to come to know him. He wants you to be in a right relationship with him. So as believers, we are entrusted with this message of love. We fulfill the promises of God when we share the gospel to the people around us, everywhere we go. So how do we do that, Pastor? You've been telling us from weeks that we have called, we are appointed, we're anointed, we have an assignment. But how do we get on mission? How do we stay on assignment? First of all, you got to embrace your identity. As a child of God, you are a carrier of Christ, of the light of Christ in you. You got the light of Christ in you. And it, it's not just something that you do. It is who you are. It's not something that you do. Let me say that again. It is who you are. You have the light of Christ in you. You got to embrace your identity and let the radiant of Christ shine through you in every interaction, in every circumstance, in every corner of your life. You got to embrace who you are, who God has called you to be. When, see, when Jesus left, he told his children, he said, listen, wait, I'm going to empower you. I'm going to give you everything that you need to get this great commission out. So embrace who you are. He's giving you everything that you need. You are the light of the world. We're not called the light of the world by accident. You are the light of of the world. Embrace your identity. And the next thing, you got to step out in faith. Mm -hmm. Begin to step out in faith. Going and being the light requires us stepping out in faith. That means that we have to leave our comfort zone. You got to take a risk. Trusting in God's guidance. In God's provision, you got to take a risk. And most of us are scared to go on the mission field, but you know what? He's not trying to get you to go to Africa. He's just trying to get you to talk to your neighbors across the street. He's not trying to call you to Asia. He's just trying to tell you to pick up the phone and call your brother or your sister and tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. See, he's just trying to get you to share the love. He's just trying to get you to open up your mouth. You got to step out of your comfort zone. Don't worry about their faces. Just begin to open up your mouth and share what the Lord has put on your heart. If you don't know the book from Genesis to Revelation, you still got enough of God's word in you. You know what God has done in your life and allow God to use your testimony. See, as Paul embarked upon his missionary journey to spread the gospel, we must be willing to go wherever the Lord leads us. And knowing this, that God is going to always go before you. Remember last week I said he will prepare the way. God will always go before you. We don't have to be afraid. God is going to go before us and prepare the way. And then we are called to illuminate the darkness. The world is full of darkness, spiritual darkness, moral darkness, emotional darkness. But we are the bearers of the light of Christ. We have the power. You need to get this. You got the power of the Holy Spirit in you. We have the power to emulate, uh, to illuminate the darkness and bring hope and healing and salvation to those who are lost and who are broken. Open up your eyes and look up on the harvest. The harvest is ripe. And God is in need of his laborers to go into the harvest field. So now we are called to illuminate the darkness. Not only that, but let your light shine. 
This is my final one. I need you to begin to let your life shine bright so all can see. Stop dimming your light. Stop pushing it under the bushel, but let your light shine. Live a life of love, integrity, and compassion that reflects the character of God. Oh, and as I was penning this, I wrote down in my message, I said, where Christ? Where Christ day in and where Christ day out. When you get up in the morning, put on Christ and say, hey, I'm a Christ representative. I'm representing my daddy. I got to wear him today. I don't wear Jackie Martin when I go out into the world. I wear my father's name. I have a new name in Jesus Christ. I'm a royal priesthood, peculiar people, called out one. I've been chosen, chosen generation. So when you get up in the morning, you got to get up like king's kids, like royalty. See, royalty understands that I can get what I need because I bear my father's name. When you go out into the world, you bear your father's name. Your father's name open up doors. Your father's name give you access to venues that will be closed. Your father's name give you access to hearts of men and women. Your father's name give you access to be able to be the illuminating light in the world. Stop covering up your light. Stop covering it up. Don't stop, wait, stop waiting to see. Do I have it all together? Listen, just go, go, baby, go, 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 go. Don't wait till you get it together. You are still a work in progress. God is still working on you. But when you go out, be the light. Be the light in behavior. Just go and let God do what he desires to do in the earth. Just imagine if all of us in this room will decide uh, and be on one accord and decide we're going to be on mission. We're going to be on mission. See, the assignment is not just to draw people to the church. The assignment is to draw people to Christ. That's the real assignment. You need to point to him. You ain't got to point to light of the world Christian fellowship church. But once you point him to Christ and then they ask you, well, where do you go? Say, follow me. Follow me over here to 16161. Follow me over here. I got a good place for you to worship. So we have to let our light shine. We got to let it shine through our deeds. We got to let it point to the source of the true light. And that is the life of Jesus Christ. Come on, church. You got the light in you. You got the light in you. Let your light so shine. That men may see and glorify the God that we serve. Come on, stand to your feet. Let us go forth with boldness, courage, and knowing that God has called us to be a light in a world that needed more than ever before. You want to know who the, the answer to what's ailing us? It's not going to be the government. Thank you, brother. The president ain't going to fix it for you. I know you say, well, when we get a new one, they're going to do No, they're not going to do it for you. See, the governor, he's not going to be able to do it for you. The politicians, they, they're not going to be able to do it for you. You look at, I need you to look at somebody in the room and tell them, say, you're the answer. You're the answer. You're the answer. You're the answer. So therefore, we have to embrace God's call to shine. If you ever want to be on a pedestal, shine for Jesus. Stop building your own kingdom and shine. Shine for God everywhere you go and be determined that you're going to shine.